Hey everybody, and uh, welcome to another exciting episode of A Double Feature. Before we begin, we just want to wish everybody a Merry Christmas. It's the holiday season, and I feel like we don't say Merry Christmas enough. So I'm going to say Merry Christmas to all of you. There, it's been said, and now it is in your ears, so let's move on. Today, as you already know, we're taking a look at It's a Wonderful Life, the epitome of all great classic Christmas movies. And to start us off, Derek, I'd like to ask you a question. How does ambition and responsibility kind of overlap with each other? Because I think, and like I said, you brought this up that you know, sort of at the end of the film, he becomes, you know, the richest man in Bedford Falls. And, and I agree that, I mean, that's that's a great message. It, it's a it's a wonderful message of hope, and we all have a, we all have meaning in life, and we all have something to do here. We all influence each other in different ways. But at the same time, does he deserve that privilege? Yeah, you know, I'm somebody I, a lot of hate mail for that, aren't I? Yeah, I, I can see that. I mean, part of me wants to say nobody deserves the recognition that they really get, um, because I I don't think anybody solely does everything they do purely by their own um, talent and whatever. It's, uh, at the very least, it is this solid aligning with their talent, their work, and maybe the needs of the community or uh, right place at right time. In other words, there's a great oh, sure, sure, sure. Right. involved and other people are always involved and everything's just so intertwined. Um, but with that said, um, yeah, he does complain because his life is being taken away from him one step at a time through circumstances that he can't control. Um, right. And so on that part, I think his complaining is perfectly justified. I don't know anybody who wouldn't complain as they're watching their hopes and dreams crumble and these other people who they've helped now take off and become horribly successful. Um, right. But with that said, I think it's also we can't deny the fact that he has helped so many people. And the the people in the town, to their credit, realize that. Um, and so when he's down to his last straw, he, he, he physically cannot help anybody, not even himself. The town can then come to his aid uh, and sort of yeah. pay back the debt. Um, and, I mean, it, it's. I think it's almost cliched at this point, but that's really where the wealth comes from. It's not monetary wealth or anything like that. It's the right. amount of people who you can now say um, depend on you as an individual and that you can depend then on them, and it's these ties that bind the town together, uh, that he really becomes the hub. He's the one that holds the entire town together, uh, which is what sort of the the vision or the alternate reality he goes to shows. Without him, Bedford Falls ceases to exist. It's now Pottersville, uh, and that's why he's the richest man in town. Um... So you had this idea of, is this really a Christmas film? Yes. And uh, and you gave some of your criteria for what makes a Christmas film mm, Christmassy. Is that, can we, can we say yeah. that? Sure. Yeah, sure we can say that. <laughs> all right, all right. Um, so, I mean, I mean, I agree with you that the setting, the time and place... Uh, isn't required to make something Christmassy. Sure. Um, for, for, I mean, that was very reasons. I mean, Batman, I think, is a great example. Um, you don't think Goons flying out of presents makes for a good Christmas movie? 
Um, I'm just I'm just wondering about maybe some other criteria that uh, as you just started listing off criteria, I'm like, well, okay, all right. Um, sure. So let me just shoot some off. Of sure, 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 sure. Uh, why this could maybe be considered a Christmas movie, and let, I just want to have you sort of bounce bounce back. Um, sure, sure, sure. What about, what about uh, for one, it's sort of this completely um, over-the-top feel-good message. But... Okay, so so are you, are we claiming then that because it's over the top and it has those religious symbols throughout, that's what makes it Christmassy? Um, no, I I mean I think the religious symbols help push it over push the top. it to the top. Okay, um, but yeah, it's it's unabashedly almost saccharine. In its sweetness and over the topness, okay. the end. they don't e- they, Yeah, they don't even attempt to make it dark. Right. Um, even at the places where it could become dark, uh, Frank Capra has thrown in lots of humor. Uh, so right. my favorite is right after they learn they've lost the $8,000, George Bailey is now threatening his uncle, you're going to go to jail. George Bailey runs out, the, the uncle throws himself down into a deep depression, and then a squirrel runs up and hugs his arm. That is over the top. That, okay, okay, all right. Okay, so... So, do you have another example of a film that does this? Yeah, there's the one, It's a Wonderful Life would be one. Um, like Annie, I would probably say there's a Christmas film as well. Um, where here's this little orphaned girl, and it's a hard knock life, but there, she gets that adopted special by this. time yeah. at Christmas, she gets adopted against all odds, and then the sun will come out tomorrow. Ah. I don't even think I've ever watched that movie during Christmas time, but I feel like I have to now. I would say Annie is a Christmas movie. Um, you know, I mean, all of the classic Christmas movies, uh, you know, Miracle at 34th Street. Of course, of course. Um, again, it sort of has that over the topness, which I think this is sort of getting into my maybe a second criteria for a Christmas movie. There's always some type of miracle. Yeah, I agree. I think the miraculous ending, that is something I, had, I hadn't considered. And so I am okay with that as a reason. Because you're right, like in The Grinch, in The Polar Express, in Miracle on 34th Street, um, even in Charlie Brown Christmas, there's sort of this miraculous ending that just throws everybody off guard and makes us perhaps believe in Santa Claus or the Christmas spirit. Yeah. <laughs> sure. Yeah. Well, and I, I, uh, I think, and so here would be my qualification number three. Uh, okay. So we have sort of like the over-the-top sweetness. Okay. Yeah. Um. Uh. The miraculous event somewhere. Okay. And I think tied into both of those two. Um. Is it, it's almost presented like a fairy tale. We're no longer really dealing with um, reality. Real people. We're dealing more with archetypes, uh, stand-ins for larger ideas. Okay. Um, sure. Like uh, Mr. Potter. He is not a real person. He is a stand-in for you know the Scrooge figure. Here's right. We're sure. just waiting okay. for him to say "bah humbug," and then our life will be at ease. <laughs> right. Um, okay. But I, I, I so I say that's probably another part that's uh, part and parcel with the other two criteria I'd have. Okay. No, I I, I am okay with that as an answer. The sweetness. Uh, sorry, I. I don't know, the over-the-topness, I mean, there are some movies that are over-the-top, and 
12 Years a Slave. 12 Years a Slave is very over the top, and I but do not, not walk out of that. it's not over the top in sweetness. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. That's true. And perhaps they do that so the miracle becomes more prevalent. Sure. You know, I mean, like, and, and when you take a look at A Christmas Carol, you're right. That movie is very over the top. A Christmas Carol, is, and even on film, the, even in the, the most recent animated movie that Jim Carrey did, I mean, that film was just very exaggerated, just very, you know, very emphasize, emphasized certain points almost to the extreme. But I think that's probably what makes the miracle so um, so heartfelt. Yeah, exactly. So in your face. All right, I'm going to think about this. There's got to be a movie out there that that discounts these these criteria. Yeah. Okay. Home Alone. Here's another great example. These movies are over the top, over the top. Yeah. In their slapstick humor. I mean, yeah. this is like. But there's, I mean, I guess there's kind of, there's not really a miracle per se. Yeah, it is. His scary, scary, scary neighbor turns out to be good and comes and saves him. Oh, I guess that's true. That's true. That's true. Check, check, check. Oh, <laughs> okay, what about number two? What about Home Alone 2? Oh my gosh. <laughs> that tried to be a Home Alone 1. It's still a Christmas movie, it's just a really bad one. Yeah. <laughs> Polar Express, How the Grinch, Christmas Carol, yeah. Alright, I'm gonna find, I'm gonna find a movie, it's out there, it is out there. To disprove and discredit your logic. <laughs> <laughs> if it makes you happy. Well, I just would like the world to realize that It's a Wonderful Life can be watched in all seasons because it is a, it has a great message. And I don't know, and I said this in my review too, I think the reason why it bothers me so much is because it seems to me that spending time with family and friends and having joy and happiness is only really appreciated during the holiday season. And I don't get that. I don't understand why... I, I enjoy my friends and my family. In fact, if I could see my family all year round, I probably would because I enjoy them and I don't need to save that little ritual for <laughs> just Christmas break where we all go home to family. And that's why I feel like It's a Wonderful Life is such a great movie. It's got a great message that we shouldn't be hiding it in the storage closet until November 30th and well, pulling it out and being like, I, I you only have 30 days to watch the movie, so you better watch it, because I'm putting it back in the storage closet after that. I think that's a different topic altogether, uh, because that's true. You know, it's the same thing with the Christmas carols. There's some people who demand the right to listen to Christmas carols all year round. Yeah, that's true. And then there's some people like me who are bah humbugs, and you better wait until after Thanksgiving before you... Break out the Christmas carols. Well, that uh, concludes our discussion for today, but uh, let us know what you think of the film. Do you think this movie is a Christmas movie? Do you think this movie can be watched other times of the year? And uh, what, uh, what do you think about um, the, uh, the line of between responsibility and and, um, and ambition. Uh, so let us know your thoughts in the comments section below. We are, of course, always anxious to hear from uh, our viewers. And as, as always, uh, you can find all the social media links in the, in the uh, notes section below as well to keep up with all the things that we do during the week. And uh, until next time, watch good movies.